most of the operation is now thanks to this phone. When you are going to take your phone and move to some other place, your phone is going to send a message to a BTS. So here, it's not even represented in the network. I'm going to show it later. What happens is that the BTS is the endpoint, the radio endpoint, which will send them some message on the SS7 network saying, location update. So it's going to tell some equipment on the network, on the SS7 network, well, this person has moved from one cell to another cell. Please direct everything that regards his identity to that new control. Now, of course, there's one SS7 network, and there's the connection, the trunk that carries your sample, so your voice. Uh, they are not the same. So let's say you have a star topology or a ring topology uh, for the uh, SS7 network. You may have a completely different topology for the sample. Sample, I'm going now to use more CDM, time division multiplexing. So most of the voice trunks are still on CDM. These are linked with familiar with T1 and E1 and stuff like that, that set up this kind of stuff. Are there some people who still do it? Oh no? Okay. Back in the time, internet used to come from these packs. Uh, when I started at one of the first ISP in France, it was 1993 or something. We had, wow, excellent line. We had 64 kilobit per second sub-channel of E1. And we were like, wow, rich. But after that, well, okay, uh, megabit, and, uh, gigabit came uh, the picture. Uh, now we are using technologies such as gigabit internet. Still, most of the phone network are still using a lot of CDM. So the thing is, from a hacker perspective, this is the place where we get, want to get it. And it's very hard to get into the SS7 network because it's a walled garden. A walled garden, it's like very open inside, but very close to the outside. There's no really much connection to the outside world. So this connection, this deep connection actually, comes from an organizational uh, practice is if you want to be connected to the SS7 network, you need to get in touch with the GSM association. And you need to pay some real money and be accepted by law as an operator. And this is a lengthy process first to apply for it. And it's even a very lengthy process to get connected because you have to go through a lot of verification called interconnection. Now, here what you see is a network which is a national network. So you see the inside of the network and there, for example, one of the STP is going to be connecting to other networks. Let's say I'm with Telecom and I connect to all the providers worldwide. In reality, with Telecom, it's an example, I don't know for them, but they are going to be using only one SS7 provider or maybe of them plus a few local peers, uh, such as the national operators, so they even have four SS7 connections, and that's it. Now, when we talk about these connections, everything is redundant on SS7. So the first security uh, point of view or interest is reliability. When we say, oh, but some people could do some evil stuff with your network, such as stealing menus and upgrading their credit on their prepaid cards. They're like, yeah, can it affect my downtime? If not, I don't care. Well, the bad news is that okay, uh, hacking into a system definitely affects the reliability of the network. And one minute of unavailability of the network is worth millions, tens of millions, even hundreds of millions in big uh, networks. So now, why do we have SS7? Well, thanks to you guys. Uh, who heard about Blue Box here? Yeah, quite everybody. So Blue Box was just abusing the system just before SS7, which was C5. At the time of C5, it was CCITC, so it was a French uh, terminology 
which was replaced later by an English terminology which is ITU. And when CTITC5 was used, it was only told that we're signaling to different equipment of the network that basically you'd be doing some call from one person to another person. So let's say I pick up my, my, call, my, my phone and then I connect to a port three number. So it's the first central office says, oh, okay, well, port three, so it's port three, so I'm not going to charge some bill. When we say charge some bill, charge some money, it's creating in the telco terminology CDR, charging data record. That's the holy grail of telecom. It's producing and storing a lot of CDR, and then which are basically negotiated for payment with all the other providers. So the more CDR you generate, the more money you make. Now the thing is with Blue Box is that some clever guys uh, found a way to blow uh, zero uh, gift, which was uh, called the Captain Crunch whistle, and it produced a perfect 2600 tone, 2600 hertz tone. And this tone would say not to the first central office, but to some other central 